Hi YouTube family, this is DLS Joy and this is being recorded live. So since I'm getting ready to do my two-step process henna and it's not like I can just wash it out and <laughs> redo it. So unfortunately you may hear a bunch of dogs and rag raggled raggling chains jingling all over the place. That's my dogs on the inside. So haven't done anything to my hair since I cut it. So this is basically has been up been it. It seems to be much puffier at the roots, which you know I kind of get that little free form jealousy going on because all other free forms I see they got this big mounds of like you know little fro undergrays which you see one right here Let's see if this will focus a little bit no. um, right here Let's hold this my and then I have a patch back here this lighting makes my hair look like it's just really like dingy brown but I know that's a henna because that's henna right there so yeah right here so anyways so yeah getting like ready to henna my hair to cover grades, I think it is uh, without stripping too much and I actually need to order some more I didn't know that's all I had left but it's the um, Rasul lava clay powder that a lot of naturals or whoever been using so I'm gonna clarify with that and I said I only only bought a small amount to try it just in case you know if I didn't like it then I wouldn't have lost too much money but I like it so I'm actually gonna have to get some more soon and then only thing I add to it because I'm not using it as a um, conditioning is just warm water to mix it. And I'm also going to add a little bit of, this is my aloe vera water. Uh, if you see my aloe vera that I've done a while back, uh, basically I just strained it using um, a separate jar. I poured some of my aloe vera gel in it, put some water, and then strain it through a strainer so that way I get rid of all the little bits and pieces. Um, that's in aloe vera when you make your own aloe vera. So yeah, I strain it with either distilled water or just regular tap water. And I'm use the last of the clay. I will be going online as soon as I finish this. I'm going to pour it in my little container here. See, it says clarifying shampoo. So, yeah, I should put clarifying mud wash. I'm going to add some more aloe vera. Okay. So I spray it down here, dampen it. And so what I'm going to go through and use this to, and I don't put any uh, gloves on my hand because this doesn't stain like henna does. So. I have 
have this new puppy and she puts everything in her mouth. Everything. So I'm concentrating on this because this is where I get a lot of my uh, excessive buildup of, you know, when your scalp is uh, exfoliating. So I try to concentrate to make sure I remove all of the dead skin in that area. So not to hold you too long for this process, I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning my hair with this. And then what I'll do next, and I'm not going to show it on camera because I don't have the setup to do all of that, is I have a bucket here that I fill with water. And I, for the last month or two, this is how I've actually been washing my locks. And I really love it because I'm actually able to, you know, put my entire locks in there and squeeze it through instead of going in the shower. To me, I'm not able... I think this is better when it soaks in and you can actually allow your locks to actually bathe in water and whatever cleansing agent you use. So I'm going to do that. What I do is when I uh, allow this to sit for a few minutes, I pour the rest of the content of what's in here and what's left in my bowl in here fill it up and that's and then I do the length of my lock so that way my whole locks get cleansed and uh, like I said I've actually liked it my entire length of my locks has been feeling very light uh, very fluffy and things like that so like I said not to hold you too long I'm gonna finish that process come back and then start um, washing my hair with this Russell clay and aloe vera uh, water mix and so I just uh, finish dividing my hair because I usually start in the front and then go to the back and the reason being is because a lot of my grays are sectioned uh, in the front and so I like to make sure that uh, I get enough get this covered so in case I don't have enough which usually I do have enough uh, so I kind of mixed up to do the back and it's really uh, pasty like so I'm going to add a little bit more warm water draw warm water I do use I do add um, amlock powder to mine so that way it says that you know henna is supposed to um, change your curl pattern a little bit and so because I didn't want my curl pattern to change a whole lot since you know I need all my kinks to lock my hair so I use that plus it also has citrix in it and so that helps with the dye release so where you don't have to use lemon juice if you use amla and then another thing is if you don't like if you use henna alone you know henna gives you that red uh, lucille ball color when you add amla, that kind of tones that down, that redness down. And so then, as I stated earlier, that um, usually I do pre poo uh, before I wash my hair. But when I hen, I kind of do go backwards with it. So I'm going to add a little bit of my Ventica oil, which I am uh, just started using. I actually like it. Because number one, it has a lot of stuff that I use anyways when I do a pre poo like the coconut and the nail oil. So I'm going to add a little bit of that, which is in this bottle, because that's what I use to put on my scalp. And uh, not a whole lot, just a few drops. So that way, it's still um, getting the oil treatment, all that good treatment while they clean up is uh, doing this job on my hair and then plus uh, 
now it's looking a whole lot better but I go a step further and I add a little bit of sugar and that makes it more creamy like I said there's my sugar I put in a separate bowl I used to use the uh, pick pick tick pick tin pick that you use for jello I uh, liked it to make it kind of gel the henna kind of gel like but because I'm already using amla which has citric and then that has citric and I'm like that's probably too much citric in the henna so I did research and one of the research I found was if you add sugar that it basically does the same thing it makes your henna a little bit creamier or I could have just kept adding water I guess but so so yeah so now it's going to give more of that pancake add a little bit more I do add a lot of sugar I still use the light mountain in red and then I will follow by the light mountain in burgundy the red is the base for to cover my grays because I noticed that just using the burgundy alone it wasn't it wasn't sticking like it was supposed to so like I said research research couldn't find out why grays you know things don't stick to gray very well so here it is again, showing my mixture. Yeah. So, getting ready to take one side. I don't cover myself up because, like I said, this is kind of like what I wear whenever I do my henna. Get this out of the way. And I don't use no brush, I just use my hand and I just put it on there. Like I said, I make sure that I get the areas first where my gray are at, you know, just in case I run out. At least I know for sure that those areas have been covered. It's cold for being in the freezer. And I've never uh, put my henna in the freezer. So I, I mean, I heard that it still will give you your dye release. In fact, it will intensify it. That's what I heard. But I guess I will be, I'm getting ready to find out. So I'm going to do that. And then I will leave this on my hair for about two hours. Like I said, the sole purpose of this is to give the uh, henna indigo a base to stick uh, of my gray areas. <laughs> I just rinsed the henna, step one. Uh, for my hair, I am mixing my indigo, which is just this. It's very dark green. And I can tell you, if you let it sit for a while, it turns like this real dark blue. I had a little bit of henna left, and so that's mixed in here. So that way, it doesn't be jet black. Uh, because indigo does fade, and so when it does fade a little bit from my hair, then it gives me my, um, my burgundy tone. Um, I'm using the black uh, because one time I did try to experiment trying to do my own uh, color. I just like it pre-mixed 
already done for me but I want to use this up and then another time I tried to do the henna with the burgundy tone here and then black back here and uh, which that was a lot of work too I'll just stick with one color and do whatever strand shows the actual burgundy tone like my grays I'll just stick with that so yeah I'm just trying to make sure I get all the henna mix with this indigo and then I'm going to apply it to my hair let's see what else did I miss anything but I added a couple of spoons of hibiscus powder which says that uh, helps with conditioning your hair too um, sea salt help indigo stick better and last a little bit longer helps it um, keep it from fading as fast and so I'm going to do the same process of dividing my hair and so here it is with the first process of the henna and right here um, I'm trying to show my grays and they are in there I just don't have very good light to show you um, right here is usually my where I have a lot of gray in there so let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and divide my hair again and then I'm going to add this step number two And this I will leave on for a just a couple hours because I heard that indigo only has uh, like a couple of hours of um, dyeing release, and then after that, it's it's not going to release anything else. So, and I think I'm just going to just curl my hair. I haven't used my regular sponge rollers in a while because my they had gotten so long, now I can use them. So I'm going to pull them babies out and roll it up and sit under the uh, dryer for a little while because it is late. It is now, I think, 6 o'clock. So I'm going to hang this up so it can dry. gloves and I said this is going to be dark when I'm all done but it does fade into a like say a burgundy hue over time So I'm basically going to do the same thing like I did. Take some of the paste and I'm going to I'm start in the front because like I said that's where my grays are at. And I want to make sure that I get all of those. So this is kind of like my spa day. So I make sure that I set enough time aside to do this. And that's the reason why it took me so long. Because I want to make sure I had time that I didn't you know, have to rush anywhere with henna in my hair.
basically dunk it in my bucket of uh, cool water until it rinses as clean as possible. Um, and then followed by a conditioning moisture therapy. Um, I've used it before. Um, I liked it. It does have um, it does uh, hydrating and repairing, safe for color treated hair, pH balancing, and conditioning. Uh, it has like neem leaf, aloe vera, um, shea butter, I'm trying to rice protein, essential oil, uh, yangling, uh, lavender, orange, jojoba oil, jojoba oil, natural vitamin E. So like a bunch of stuff in here that's good. So that's what I'm going to use as my conditioner along with add a little bit more oil my herbal oil this is what I actually been using after I clean, uh, wash my hair instead of uh, conditioner followed by um, I use the aloe vera mist or spray or whatever and then use that uh, sit under a dryer blah 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 my regular routine but anyways so I'm not to wait long, so I'm going to let this sit this is and come back joy. To I am finally done. Whew. So I take everything off and wash it. But anyways, just wanted to show you my result. And I said I'm just going to just roll it up tonight. Some regular rollers. Uh, but yeah, everything gray has been covered for another couple of months. I say my hair is dark now, but it will have a burgundy hue uh, in a few days uh, after maybe. Um, it'll stay dark for a while, maybe a couple of washes. I say indigo, it's not fades a little bit uh, more than henna. Henna, I haven't noticed it fading. So indigo is the one that usually fades and then like I said but enough stays where it gives me a burgundy hue. I'm trying to figure out what's this? Did I start this or did this curl on its own? Huh? Look at that. I think I'm just going to let it be and see what it does. Uh, but yeah so it is dark yet. The grays are covered. I am happy again that I can pull off being <clears throat> for a little while longer. <laughs> now I'll be 47 this year in September. So, so yeah. It is covered. I say it's a long process. That's why I tried to, I really tried to uh, postpone it as long as possible because uh, it is a tedious process. But um, like I said, once it's done, it's covered. I like it. Uh, and so I'll just show you a picture of how my curls went. Looks after rolling it on some just regular sponge rollers with the paper in paper so that way it doesn't uh, dry out my locks. And thank you for watching. God bless and take care. The camera's this way and take care.